get a bolognese. Um, I'm going to make this for four people. So a tin of tomatoes, a couple of cloves of garlic. Well, depending on how much you like garlic, we tend to put about four or five in. Um, 200 grams of carrots-ish, two large ones, three medium. Same with the mushrooms, about 200 grams. A pepper, because I need to use it, um, but you can put any colour pepper in, doesn't really matter. I'm using 500 grams of uh, lean minced beef. The leaner the better. Um, it doesn't taste so greasy. Onion, oxo cube, and basil and oregano if you've got it. Here's now to cut an onion, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use that as my waste tray. Onion, top, tail now there's loads of ways you can stop them making you cry people say silver spoons in your mouth putting bread in your mouth uh, wearing goggles helps i think after years of doing this job it doesn't really matter because none of them work or all of them work depending the best thing is, is to leave the tail on because it releases chemicals into the rest of the onion which makes your eyes sting so top take it off don't take too much off because it's just a waste and then with the bottom just nick the bottom off so you can see the tail there still. And then we're just gonna peel the onion skin off. So I use a knife because I don't really have nails. Let's get the knife underneath there. Pull it all off. You really wanna take the brown skin off before you cut it because otherwise you'll end up with the brown skin in the sauce and you don't really want that. Okay, so. All of it off. Just a little bit there. Okay. okay, so you have your onion. Okay, now I'm going to swap knives now just to make it easier for myself. You don't have to, it's really your choice. Keep the top at the top, bottom and bottom, and slice right through. Okay, now you want the, the heel of the onion, the tail, towards the back of your hand. Okay, make sure none of this is on the board. And what you're trying to do is slice through it, but not to the end of the tail. Okay, so I've got all them sliced up. You can hopefully you can see that. Push it together, heel, tail, and then don't do this because you will lose your fingers. Keep it so the knife is against your knuckle bones. So you're literally just going to cut the onion. So now you should get a nice fine dice. When you get to the scraggly bit where it hasn't quite cut all the way through, take the onion like that and then cut it on the crossway. Got a little bit of onion here. Waste not, want not. Keep cutting. And then all you're left with is the tail. Once you've cut your onion up, just put it to the side. What I'm going to do first now, uh, what I'm going to do next now, I should say, is brown off my mince while I sort my carrots out. So, you know that smell you get when you cook burgers or steaks, you get that lovely smell? Well, it's an actual chemical reaction with the heat and the meat. So what happens is you get what's called a mallard reaction. And that's what we're looking for. It gives the, it gives the um, beef flavour. So I'm just going to break it up. I'm not putting any fat in because there's some fat in the beef anyway, the mince. It is important that you cook mince all the way through. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that like that. And I'm going to show you how to do some carrots. Cutting carrots, I'm going to... Not, I'm not going to top and tail them, which a lot of people do, because I always catch my nails. So what I do, top, oh, she says, top of the bottom, tail here, and we're going to go all the way around, peel in. If you think about used by a best before date, vegetables tend to have a best before date. So don't worry if they're a couple of days old. As long as they smell right, look right, and they're not slimy, you should be always okay with carrots. Okay, now again, the reason why I don't top and tail carrots when I peel them is because I end up grating my fingers. So we've just peeled the whole thing. Tail at this end, it's been peeled. We're not wasting anything by throwing the tail away. And then we're literally just grating the carrot. Now the carrot added to the mince on the dish 
will make it a little bit sweeter. And as you can see, that's all I'm throwing away with the carrot. And it'll get some extra vegetables into your bolognese without you even knowing it because it will cook down into the sauce. Okay, this is how to cut a pepper. Small knife, pull the way around, and then just twist. Nice and simple, okay? With a knife, just take out the core, give it a tap, like a smack in a baby's bottom. Take out the pith, that's this white stuff here, because that's quite bitter. Green peppers tend to be a little bit more bitter than red and yellow, so obviously they've not seen as much sunshine. Give it a quick tap, and then we have two pe two, the peppers cut in half, okay? Now, I'm going to slice it. The, 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 the knife I'm using is just a normal uh, chef's knife. All up. Don't worry and funny around with it being a precise cut, it doesn't really matter. It's going to get cooked anyway. A few scragglers here. Chop them up as well. And then we do the same again to the other half. Hi, right, the beef's practically there, okay? Because this is lean mince, there's not a lot of fat, but there is enough to cook the vegetables we're about to put in. So, as I said before, onions in. Use your fingers, it's easier. Okay, I'm going to stir this in. Now we do want the onions to cook because we do want them to have a little bit of colour. Onions turn really nice and sweet if you cook them um, rather than boil them. If you've had a barbecue and done onions on the barbecue, they taste really lovely and sweet, a lot nicer. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to put my carrot, my carrots and my peppers on this plate. And while that cooks, I'm going to show you how to do garlic. So when you're doing garlic, I'm going to take the rough layers off first. Then on here, I'm just going to do this. It's important that you use the heel of your hand on the blade. Okay? So, easiest way to do this, you get all sorts of gizmos to help you peel garlic. The easiest way is a knife and a chopping board. Clove, knife, heel, hit. And then what you'll see is it just pops out. Okay, I'll do it again. Clove, the largest piece of the knife, heel. And then hopefully it should just peel off. Okay. I've got a little bit of dark there, so I'm just going to take that off. It just means it's a bit of that has dried off. Heel. Sometimes it takes two wax. It's also nice to hit it when you've had a bad day or a row with your husband, okay? Or boyfriend. Hey. Or girlfriend for that matter. Okay, this one's a little bit smaller so it's a bit more fiddly. Okay. Excuse the pepper and the carrot, it's all going in my bolognese. Okay, so you get your uh, garlic knife, keep your fingers away off the blade. Again, remember using your knuckles and simply slice it. If you want to practice this skill at home with the knife, it literally is moving the knife like a rocking motion. Okay? And then if you think of garlic as in the inside of the garlic, it's like uh, the inside of an orange nectarine segment, so it's got like little bubbles all the way through it and that's where all the flavour is. So what you do is you use the side, the flat side of your knife and just flatten it to try and release all them bubbles that's in the garlic. Bring it all back together. Now if you wanted you could do a clove, a whole bulb of garlic Nice big uh, um, bunch of parsley and a block of butter. Mash it all together and then you've got your garlic butter to go onto your garlic bread if you're making garlic bread.
Okay. Okay, the beef and the onion have um, had a nice couple of minutes cooked together. I'm going to put in the carrots and the peppers. You can put more vegetables in if you want, or less. I've done about 200 grams and a pepper. Okay. Why it's not warm up? Get your spoon in there. It also makes it a lot easier to clean. Filling up with carrots and all your dishwasher water, washing machine water. I'll try that again. Carrots in the water. Okay. So you can have courgettes instead of carrots if you wanted. You really have any sort of veggies. Okay. So I'm just going to stir this through. My onions have caramelised a little bit, so they'll be a little bit more sweet. Okay. Just going to stir it through. Put it back on the heat. We're going to add the garlic. Okay. A little bit of carrot and pepper that sneaked away earlier. Okay, and just stir this in. You don't put the garlic in with the onions because the garlic can burn quite easily. So you put it in with the carrots and the peppers. Okay. Now, I'm going to top up my, my mushrooms for my bolognese. Okay, here's how to cut mushrooms. Okay. A lot of people throw the, the uh, stalk away, don't, it's just a waste of money, okay? Now, I'm putting these in a bolognese, um, and normally I would cut them quite thinly. You could do that for stir fries or anything. Unfortunately, my daughter's boyfriend doesn't like mushrooms, so I have to cut them chunky. So he can pick them out and give them to his girlfriend. But it really is up to you. If you've got someone that doesn't like mushrooms, the finer you cut them, the less likelihood they'll be able to taste them anyway. So, like I said before, this is about 200 grams. It looks quite a lot, but but mushrooms have a high water content, so these will cook down to, I would say, nearly a quarter of what I've got here. So don't worry too much. Okay, so the peppers and the carrots. I've had a couple of minutes to cook. You can see the carrots starting to wilt and you can see it's already reduced. Now we're going to add the mushrooms. Just gently cook it, put it in. It'll keep cooking. And like I said, the mushrooms will cook down. You'd be quite surprised just how low it goes. This will take probably about four or five minutes. While that's happening, what I'm going to do is move this away. Anything you can recycle, please do. Check to see if it can be recycled. It's written on the bottom. Okay, so check your local council to see what stuff you can and can't recycle. Okay, then tin of tomatoes, she says, looking for the tin opener. Excuse the mess in the drawers. Doesn't have to be potting the tomatoes. These cost me 29 pence in Aldi, okay? So it's not the tomatoes that make the dishes, or a huge combination. So for this, this is four people, don't forget. One tin of tomatoes. One about a tablespoon of tomato puree, which is about that. If you want a, a little trick to get the paste down to the bottom, carefully holding the end, you can use a wooden spoon or a knife or anything just to push the tomato puree to the end. Waste not, what not again. Okay. Oxo cube. I think Marky Pierre White has used these and got a slam in for it, but you're right, he's right. People do get used to the taste and just an extra, an extra depth of beef flavour to the bolognese. So I've opened up the wings. All I'm going to do is push. So when we open it, it'll all be ready just to be tipped in. Okay. All right, it's a couple of minutes in after I put the mushrooms in. You can see it's starting to cook down nicely. The mushrooms are a lot smaller. Looks like it's not trying to escape out the dish, out the pan. Okay, so we'll keep this going for a couple more minutes before we add everything else. Okay, so it's cooked down a lot now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add my tomato puree, tea said tablespoon, squeeze it in. Okay, tin tomatoes. These are just chopped. Okay, put that in. 
It also doubles as a spoon rest. But don't forget to wash it and recycle it when you're finished. Here goes my OXO cube. And then last ingredient is about a teaspoon of oregano and basil. Okay. Stir it in. I've just been reliably informed, I say waste not what not too often, but hey, there we go. So everything in, stir it in. Right, here we go. Have a look at the water, it's just starting to boil. Okay, I'm going to drop a salt. And then I'm putting in 300 grams of dried whole wheat pasta. It's about 75 grams of dried pasta per person. Well, it is in my house anyway. Okay. The water's just starting to boil after I've put the pasta in. So now we want to turn it down so it's just bubbling. Okay, the pasta's cooked. Swollen quite nicely. If you want to check it, you can pinch it and you can feel that it's cooked, okay? We're going to lift it up carefully. It is boiling water after all. Over to the sink. There we are. Into the sink. Take the colander out. Put it in the pan. Let it drain. Just for a minute. And it's ready to serve. Okay, the bolognese. Simmered down quite nicely, as you can see. Let's stir. As you can see, let's stir. Okay. 